Okay, now uh, what we are going to go is go a little bit into depth into how do we get monitoring data. So, I am actually going back here to the two span bridge uh, example which you are all familiar with. I think it was lecture 8 where we went into uh, you know calculating the duration of, uh, of uh, the various activities of this bridge and I think I have uh, taken those durations and put it in a bar chart here. I think many of you might have done this already and uh, we have the various activities here in the bar chart. You can see the activities the way I have listed this and uh, but the bar chart shows the early start schedule. Okay? Uh, what we are going to do is now we want to take monitoring. So, we can go to the discussion, how frequently would I monitor this project? Should I monitor it every day? And again, please remember this is the monitoring as far as a macro schedule is concerned. I can be, I should monitor things on a daily basis and that is for the micro schedule. There is no doubt about it, I sh should be getting a daily progress report. But if I am going to update my, my network schedule, how frequently should I update it? And uh, for that doing it on a daily basis might not be required. I could choose, you know, I am going to do it every 5 days, 10 days, 15 days, you know and uh, you know obviously let us go to some extremes. Obviously it is does not make sense for me to review it every 3 months for example. Okay, it does not make sense for me to review it every 3 months because uh, within 2 updates the project will be over and if, if I do not know the status of the project you know in my first update or if I only know the status of my project after 3 months that the, some things are happening, some things are not happening, that is really not, uh, it is not, it's not enough time for me to do control action. Okay? Whereas if I go to try to schedule it on a day, I mean try to update it on a daily basis, the overhead of you know getting the data, then I have to have meetings, to, 2 meetings a week, too many meetings and there will be more meetings than actually work getting done. Okay, so, we have here selected uh, an update every 10 days okay, uh, and that seems reasonable for a project of this, you know, might be if, if people are extremely familiar with the project, might even be, you can even take it every 20 days or even every month if the project is a very standard kind of project as this kind of uh, turns out to be. But let us for illustration take every 10 days, it is it's kind of a nice uh, period to do. And uh, please, re please, I would like to also mention one more thing. In this schedule, we have taken it as uh, not calendar days, but continuous days. If you put this onto a, a professional software and put a calendar onto it, you will find that the day schedule changes based on holidays and other things. So, here we are, uh, so if you try to put this into Microsoft Project or Primavera, you will find that uh, the, the calendar then comes into play and the dates, the days will certainly change, okay? the duration of the project will increase. Here we are just working continuously through all the days. So, and we are taking now coming back we are taking a, a monitoring update period of, 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 of every 10 days and what I am going to go forward is I am going to take this what I have circled here, this set of activities okay? because just for the illust for mostly for illustration I am going to take this set of activities and go forward with this. Okay? So, here we are. You know, uh, so this is I have got about uh, you know 35 days of activities zoomed in over here and we have uh, you know 6 activities listed. So, you can see order deliver piles, cast beams, drive piles east, okay, the east pile cap, east abutments and the center piles and you can see the planned schedule on each. Okay, you can see the uh, schedule from the early start perspective. Okay, so, this is going from you know to 15, 0 to 15, uh, you know 0 to 20, you know and so on. And if we wanted to update the schedule, how do I update? So, remember my, my uh, monitoring is, is on every 10 days. So, here we are. Now, let us say we are 10 days into the project and uh, so, on the 10th day I want to do an update. So, what is the data I am going to look for? So, here we go, I have put up a table as to typical data that I might collect. So, my first two activities which are order and deliver piles have started okay? and uh, the plan start was 0, 0, my actual start. Okay? So, here we go, I am kind of going to in this exercise here, I am going to assume everything is ideal, everything is going as planned, I am only illustrating where the values go, uh, not likely to happen, but you know in exactly as I have illustrated it, but, but it is again more for an illustration sake. So, plan start is 0, 0, actual start is 0, 0. 
Okay, so now I am on the 10th day. My plan finish for 1 and 2 is 15 and 20. So, they would not have finished yet, but they will be progressing. Okay, I, I, so they started, I have recorded here that they started as planned. They have not yet finished, but what I need to do here is then on the 10th day, what is my percentage complete of the first activity? What is my percentage complete of the second activity? I should be able to enter a value there for as an update. Now, my other activities have not yet started because I am on the 10th day and so they do not come into play for this update. But the question now is what do I enter for these two? We will, we will answer this question uh, in due course. Now, I move on to the second update okay, which is on day 20. Okay, it is on day 20, my second update and here we can see that, uh, see so by 20th day if I look on my schedule, uh, activity 1 and 2 should have been completed and here you can see I have completed and now I am actually able to enter 100 percent complete because they have been completed. But in the earlier phase I was not able to enter, uh, I was not able to enter percentage complete because they were halfway through. Okay, once they completed, it is easy for me to enter and of course, once if, a, if an activity is not started also, it is easy for me to enter 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, but so, 0 and 100 are okay to enter. The challenge is how do I calculate percentage complete in between. So, here when we, we look at uh, update on 20, okay, so we are on this, this line here and we can see these two activities are complete and drive piles east is going on. Okay, drive piles east is going on, which is highlighted in green here. It started as scheduled. Again, the question is, I do not know, it is made progress, but what is my percentage complete? Okay, the others which have not started are again, of course, 0, 0, 0 as far as, because nothing has been started on those. Okay, so, so this is that, you know, it is just an illustration of what, what a basic update could be. Okay, and the key here is for us to focus on the key update information is percentage complete of activities that are in progress. How do I actually get that done? We now move on to, uh, you know, the same thing continues. I have gone to uh, update 3 on day 30. Okay, once I have gone to day 30 here, okay, you can see that uh, the activities that are active, okay, the first 3 activities are over, east pile cap and pile center are activities which need update and the east abutment is not yet started. And when I go to 40, okay, which is 5 beyond here, all, all the activities assuming everything is going as planned, all activities uh, you know, except east abutment have been completed because they are going as per plan and east abutment I still need to know how much progress was made. Okay? So, so this is an issue. How do I enter the percentage complete of an activity? Now, so, there are methods, spe specific methods by which we should be able to enter percentage complete of an activity and here I have listed a few of the popular methods or much reference methods and uh, you know we will see how these methods are applicable in specific situations. So, the first method is cost time ratio uh, where what we are basically doing is the proportion of cost or time versus total. Okay, I will explain this uh, you know through an example later or units complete is a very direct method where we are saying you know if I have 100 units of work and I finish 50 then it is 50 by 100 is my percentage complete. Okay, straight, straight forward. Incremental milestone or seemingly straightforward I should say. Incremental milestone is I take an activity like procurement or design or you know I put milestones in between you know which says if it is procurement I say purchase order issued you know purchase order issue acknowledged, item shipped, I put uh, milestones in between and based on these uh, intermediate milestones as they reach it I can then say okay you know if the item has been shipped I am up to 80 percent complete, you know if customs is going to be cleared I am at you know this percentage complete. So, I would be, I will be identifying milestones for which, which I would be uh, defining my percentage complete based on. Start finish is uh, even simpler, it is a start milestone, finish milestone. If something starts, I say a specific percentage is complete. Finish, I say 100. So, it is either 0 before it starts or 100 after it finishes. It is a basically a start completion milestone. Level of effort is an interesting technique. Okay? I will uh, be uh, showing this a little more in detail in the, as the example proceeds. 
So, but just you know an abstract way it is a weighted sum of sub activities. We, we will give you an example for this. And of course, there is always the opinion of an experienced supervisor to be able to, uh, to, to be able to give their opinion on how much they think the percentage complete is. So, these are the typical techniques. So, let us just uh, apply some of these and see what is applicable okay, to the, to the uh, example which we dis just discussed. So, let us say we are on day 10 you know and uh, we want to update the status of order and deliver piles. You may you will recall that we you know on day 10 we had put a question mark you know what is the percentage complete. So, how will I actually measure percentage complete of order and deliver piles if I was on day 10. So, one option is if I am using the cost time ratio in this particular case I will be using time. We are basically saying uh, the activity is 15 days and we you know the activity has is, is the duration of the activity is 15 days and 10 days are over. So, the percentage complete is 10 by 15. Okay. You have to uh, decide if that is a fair uh, assessment of percentage complete or not. Okay. Obviously, uh, it might not be a fair assessment because we are assuming that uh, the progress of this particular activity is is proportional to time spent which need not be the case. Okay? So, there can be uh, I mean there is there is there is you actually need information from the activity to do this. So, this is not a very good indicator of uh, percentage complete for this particular case. What about units complete? You know for order and deliver piles if I am on day 10 my de uh, piles delivered is 0. Okay? If I am going to take units complete I will get 0 as an answer you know which might not again reflect the actual effort that has gone into this order and deliver piles. What about incremental milestone? So, this seems to have some, uh, some application to this uh, particular activity. So, I can take order deliver piles and break it into milestones for, for example, I can say uh, select vendor and you know uh, issue purchase order, uh, transport Okay, I can have series of milestones and then as each milestone so thing select vendor I might say is 20 percent issue purchase order I might say if I have once I have issued purchase order 50 percent of the activity is complete a milestone. Once I go into transport start of transport I say 80 percent and delivery I will say 100 percent. So, so I have 20, 50, 80, 100 on day 10 I see what has happened oh transport has started and then I will say 80 percent is complete. Okay, so, that would be the initial incremental milestone. Start finish is another option, okay, but if I am going to use start finish in this particular situation the answer is 0. I mean in terms of yes might be something has started, but it is not finished the answer is basically or I should say because it started. I would give it say 50 percent for it to start, 50 percent for it to finish. So, I could say yes the activity has started, I have issued all this. So, I am giving it a 50 percent, it is a, it's a possible way. Level of effort does not easily, it can apply to this activity in this sort of way if we break it down into milestones and put uh, numbers on it, but we will illustrate this for the next activity uh, in you know it is more appropriate for it. Supervisor opinion is certainly a way we can uh, get this you know obviously supervisor opinion will apply to any of the any of the activities but in this case you can ask the experienced supervisor you know what is the status of uh, of the pile uh, order and delivery and he can come up with he or she can come up with his opinion and say you know it's, i think it's x percent because i got assurance from the supplier that it will be here in you know within within a day or two or whatever so you can get an opinion on this so if we look at this particular uh, activity Okay, we know that units complete cannot give us a good uh, answer, cost time ratio I do not think can give us a good answer. Uh, incremental milestone yes, start finish might be, okay, but we need to get this one. Level of effort in this particular case it's, I think it is too detailed for this activity. Uh, supervisor opinion yes, you know maybe depending on the expertise of the supervisor. So, if we are we have to choose and I mean if I would choose I would give incremental milestone the most appropriate way of finding uh, a percentage complete of this particular activity. Now, let us take uh, the next activity which is cast beams 
and we can do the same discussion. Okay, so now cast beams, we you know we remember that this was something which we broke it up into sub activities earlier. Okay, so let me just go to the uh, remember this, this was from lecture 8 when we were going to cast, uh, when we were calculating the duration for beam casting, please refer to this, we broke it up into very much more detail. Okay, please keep that in mind. So, now when we come back to the cast beam activity here and we say that I am on day 10, okay, if I use cost time ratio, okay, or mostly time ratio, it should, it should give me 10 by 20, okay, or if I use, uh, that, so that should say 50 percent complete, okay, if I use uh, units complete, obviously no beams have come out, okay, by, by 10, no beams have come out, so it will be 0, okay, if we, if we go back to the uh, thing, the first set of beams will come out after 16, okay, so units complete is 0. Uh, incremental milestones, yes, I could use incremental milestones if I defined uh, proper incremental milestones along this process like you know setting up the bed, pouring concrete, I could do this. Uh, start finish could be done again because in this particular case because it is simple it could be done but might not be so easy to define, you know once I have got my form work and everything in place, I will say I have started. And once the beams are finished after the 20th day, I can say finished. But still, we want a more, uh, a more uh, detailed way of being able to assess the uh, percentage complete. So we will actually use level of effort on this. I will illustrate level of effort with this. And of course, in this case also, the supervisor's opinion can have, uh, can can be something which they can go by. Okay, but. Let us go into the level of effort. So, if you recall again, these were the various uh, activities which we took in the in the cast uh, beam in calculating the durations. What we have done here is, uh, is put these activities in the form of a, of a daily schedule. Okay? So, now we have gone to the micro level. Okay? So, because we were able to get these in the form of a daily schedule, we are actually go, able to go to the micro level. And uh, you can see, you can see in this micro level what we have done is we have the first set of forms, okay, that is here, the second set here, and we have gone on a daily basis and said what is happening at on each day, okay. And as we go in through each day, we can see that uh, here. So here is our update day, okay. Remove former the, the beams get completed only here. So if I'm updating here with units complete, like we said, no units are complete, okay. And we have had this discussion, so you know we we are, we are not able to uh, to be able to get the exact way. What we are going to do is we are going to what we use called level of effort. So in the level of effort approach, we are taking each of these activities and giving it a weightage based on the effort which we think is required. So here we have see assemble and reinforce. We are saying as 0.5, pour concrete 0.2, setting 0.1, remove formwork 0.1, curing 0.2. Okay, so this is the weightage I'm using for each of these, uh, each of these sub activities within the, the the casting beam activity. Okay, and what we then do is go ahead and for 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 the the update period of of uh, over here. Okay, for ten days we are looking at we are putting so here you can see I've introduced the weightage as as the uh, as a column here and the total the sum of all the weight should total 1 okay so we can see that totals 1 now i look at quantity complete how many beams have already been assembled and reinforced by this day you will find this set has been assembled and reinforced as well as this set so the value is 6 poured concrete both in in six sets concrete has been poured okay setting also all six you know setting is over Okay, by the time I have come, remove form work all 6, curing both are undergoing curing until it comes when it comes you know curing right now is 0, but when it comes here the first 3 would have cured and when it comes here the next 3 would have cured. Okay? So right now it is 0, so now what we do is take a weighted quantity that is we are taking the quantity complete for that particular sub activity into the weightage of that sub activity and this column gives you those values. 
and you totals up to a value of 5.4. So, basically through this level of effort calculation, I am saying that 5.4 out of 6, that is 5.4 out of 6 beams have been completed, which works out to a percentage complete of 90 percent. Okay, so, now this could be a, a more reasonable value to enter as a percentage complete of the activity, but it requires some amount of calculations in being able to assess weightages and being able to break it down into finding out what particular sub activity is completed during the update period. So, it is also uh, probably uh, you know you will realize that if you do not plan in this level of detail, you will not be able to monitor or you will not even be able to get a benchmark at this level of detail. So, it is still a macro plan, I want an update on the 10th day and I am going to be able to get 90 percent complete, whereas if I had used some other techniques, you get different values. So, if we actually compare the, the various values, okay, you will see that uh, the units complete you get 0, level of effort you get 90 percent complete. Okay. Uh, incremental milestone depends certainly on the milestones defined and on the supervisor's opinion also it certainly depends on the experience of the supervisor, but the level of effort in this particular case has given us a very systematic way of getting the percentage complete. Okay. Now, uh, to kind of wind up uh, some of the key issues in monitoring, okay, to you know, we, we have uh, kind of seen here that planning detail has to be adequate to en en enable reasonable monitoring. If I did not, if I, if I simply suggested 20 days, uh, you know, as the duration for beam uh, casting beams without the level of detail in planning, it will be a little more uh, difficult for me to have a structured way of measuring the percentage complete of the activity. So, the more detail we have. Or, or an adequate level of detail is required for establishing a good monitoring system. Now, we have also seen based on the earlier example, percentage complete will vary based on the method used. This is really a tricky issue. This can be used by the planning engineer, uh, you know, sometimes uh, to, be, to be very optimistic on how the project is progressing. And, uh, you know, if, if you are sometimes too optimistic in the early stages of the project, you will find that it is uh, the, the whole uh, realism comes only in the later stages and the project will and things will catch up with the whole team if the, if the reports are only optimistic. But this issue of uh, which method to use to appropriately capture the actual percentage complete is, is really an issue and uh, probably a bit of experience, bit of judgment is required to be able to use the correct method for the, for the activity. Okay. Finally, to summarize. Uh, I, I hope you all appreciate that monitoring con control is, is really uh, critical and to ensure the project is you know steered towards meeting the objective. So, without, without the monitoring and control phase, we will not be able to uh, bring the project to meet its objectives. Okay? Just planning alone will not do. And it is very common to see uh, detailed plans developed, but the monitoring phase is just left to uh, what, what the site team thinks and there is no real planning team involved in the monitoring phase. And that, that you know, to, to be able to get large projects in on, uh, on to meet objectives, we really need a coordinated effort to do that. We talked about uh, schedule update frequency. You know, we said it should be based on project requirements. We said it de depends on the level of control, the level of the plan. Uh, certainly, all projects have some kind of daily update of the micro plan. But when we come to the macro plan, what is the level of update will have to be decided again based on requirements and judgment. Uh, we looked at some of the monitoring reports, but uh, this there are several formats available. There are several requirements available. But rather than use a format, uh, please understand the you know the, you should understand what the information is being used for, what decisions will be made with the information, and based on that the report should be generated. And uh, in the last topic, we found that you know the work progress measurement is important and this is at the heart of the monitoring system, how we are measuring the progress of work. If the progress of work is not measured, if, if, if there is incorrectness in the way work progress is measured, obviously anything else that uses that data will not be able to reflect the project correctly. So, it is extremely important that the work progress measurement reflects the field measurement or what is happening on the field accurately 
and uh, you know can't say more about it because it's really important and this is where a lot of the weak links in the planning and monitoring system are. Okay, with that uh, we look forward to your questions and discussions on this topic. Thank you.